Hello. Let me turn on some lights here. Whoa, that's a little too bright. Hang on a second here. Just dim that down a little bit. Change the setting. There we go. That was just a little bit too bright. And why is my camera reversed? It's very strange. I don't know why that's happening. Shouldn't be. Yeah. Oh, so. There we go. I'm a little uh, discombobulated at the moment. I am. Uh, I'm just uh, super tired. Very, very tired. Um, had a had a busy week last week. Very busy work week. Worked late uh, four nights in a row. Then, of course, the uh, production stuff that I do it really kind of uh, drains me of my energy. But that's okay. But, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Super, super tired tonight. Hang on a second here. This light is a little too bright. I think I'll just dim that down a little bit. That's a little bit better. I'm trying to uh, set a mellow mood here, after all. <sighs> so I... Uh, let me see here. What do I got? Oh yeah, there we go. There's the uh, quad cam. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I um, spent um, yesterday, well Saturday, we did the live podcast for those of you who uh, were able to take uh, part. Sometimes... Uh, have a good group of people, well, actually, we usually have a very good group of people that tend to uh, enjoy our company on a Saturday afternoon, and uh, I'd like to think that uh, this past Saturday was no no different. I uh, I had a good time. I was super tired, though. I'd just been wiped out the last few days. I think I've been working entirely too much, and that really can uh, drain one's energy. I've been... Uh, Napping on and off <laughs> since I finished work today. I finished work at 4.30 and uh, took a lie down for about 45 minutes. Got up and made some dinner. And then just sort of puttered about. I just watched a film. Just finished a few minutes ago. Um, the Banshees of In Inishirin. It's an Irish tragic comedy. Um... Brendan Gleeson and uh, Colin Farrell starred in it, along with um, Carrie Condor, I believe is her name. Carrie Condon. Carrie Condon. It's a good film. Um, dark, dreary, depressing. It takes place during the uh, Irish Civil War in the 20s. So I think it was around 1923, so 100 years ago. I don't know if I would recommend it for anybody who might be um, battling uh, depression. It was uh, released in 2022. It's actually up for a few Oscars, Steve. It's a good film, but um, it's dark um, and slow and a little sad, but it has some comedic elements in it. Um, strange little movie, but, you know, it was good. Yeah, it, it does have a, a, a Cohen feeling for sure, Mikhail. Um, I guess that the darkness is a little bit more prevalent than the humor, though. Um, at least I certainly, certainly thought so. And maybe I'm just not in the right frame of mind to watch a film of that nature. Because I'm a little... Uh, hmm... Feeling a little despair today. 
And I shouldn't. Although, you know, I did, uh, I did, I, I did spend, you know, work, I worked from home today, so no interactivity with other human beings, and I think that, that can oftentimes take its toll on one, right? So, yeah, I think, uh, maybe because of, of, uh, my solitude today, that's probably drained my energy and, and put me into this sort of, uh, despair-like state, you know? Hi, Leanne, how you doing? Yeah, tomorrow's another day and everything, you know, I know that everything will be okay. Um, it's just sometimes, some days are tougher than others, right? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not terribly, terribly sad, just, um, my tank is on running low. I'm, I'm, I'm almost out, if that makes sense. I'm feeling empty. And I think tomorrow um, I'll get a full refill because I'll, I'll go into the office and I'll see some co-workers and I'll have some coffee with some good people. And I've got a very busy day ahead of me. Uh, the rest of the week is kind of a nightmare. It was Well, I, today was a work day for me. Um, I know that a lot of people had the day off in, uh, across the country because it was uh, family day in Ontario. And I think it's the same in B.C., I can't remember what it's called in the, on the prairies. I know each province has a different name. I think it's Heritage Day in PEI. I could be wrong. It wasn't a holiday in Quebec, though, I'm told. I mean, it was just a regular work day for me, so... You know, such is life. And it's it's because uh, I do work in the private sector, but my my company has me contracted to a crown corporation, so as a result, I... Um, I have to work on uh, Family Day. Family Day was um, an established statutory holiday in the province of Ontario um, back in, oh, it's got to be 12 years now, I think, under the Dalton McGuinty uh, premiership. And uh, through uh, multiple provinces in, in, in Canada have, uh, it's either Family Day or Heritage Day or PEI Day or something to that effect. Um, um, I think the only province that doesn't observe it or, or have a holiday on this particular day is, is the province of Quebec. But they have Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day. But they don't have Canada Day, so... Yeah, I think they're getting shortchanged. <laughs> anyway. It's just meant as a, a day to be spent, uh, I guess, with your family. Not everybody has a family, so it's, you know, kind of a strange title, I guess, sometimes. But, um, you know, after after New Year's Day... There's no statutory time off until um, Easter, and this year Easter isn't until April, well, Good Friday is April 7th, so basically no, um, you, you know, just regular work weeks from January 2nd until April 7th. It's a long stretch to have just regular weekends, you know, because the long weekend really does make life a little bit better, even though the following work week I find is... <laughs> rather hectic because you have to cram five days worth of work into four and that can be difficult sometimes oh president's day right yeah yeah i used to see commercials for president's day uh, all the time but you know i only I only watch streaming services um now that you know i don't watch a lot of broadcast television for for the most part i i rarely ever watch it um I watch the NFL after the Canadian Football League season is finished, after the Grey Cup. Uh, and I do watch a few uh, Raptors games, but I can catch that on Canadian television, so they don't show a lot of them on, on the U.S. networks, right? Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I used to see ads for President's Day, but I haven't seen one in a long time. Uh, today... Uh, Today was a quiet work day. It wasn't uh, wasn't as busy. I had a few meetings, got a few things accomplished, but it was a very very quiet day. And uh, yeah, the solitude is sometimes wonderful and other times exhausting, because I tend to get my energy from other people. So if I'm not around people, I can get very tired, which is strange. Yeah. Oops, that's a squeaky sound. I didn't mean that to happen. 
just adjust this microphone here as I lean back in my chair a little bit. Oh, I forgot to light the candle. Oh, that's okay. Let me just adjust that. There we go. That's better. Uh, so how's everybody feeling? Are the, is, is winter getting to you? Because we're not really having a traditional winter here in Canada's capital right now. Um, it was plus two degrees Celsius today. So I guess that's about 32 degrees for my uh, friends in the U.S. of A. Which um, is unseasonably warm in this city at this time of the year. The world-famous Rideau Canal, the world's longest skating rink, uh, didn't open this year. Winterlude, which is our winter carnival, uh, ended today. It, it happens over the course of three weekends in February, today being the last day. And uh, one of the big features of Winterlude is skating on the, the canal, which is a world UNESCO heritage site, by the way. Well, anyway, um, it's been too warm, and it has not opened. And now that we are approaching the end of February, it looks like it's not going to open at all. It's a weird winter, and it's messing with our brains, I think. Am I going to complain about the, the, the warmer temperatures? Yeah, actually, I am. <laughs> Skating on the canal is something I look forward to every year because it uh, it makes winter worthwhile, right? You know, if it, it's going to be cold out, you might as well be able to do some activities. And usually I find in the winter I'm a great deal more active than I am in the, am in the summer. I tend to ski a lot, although the ski season this year is not the best, and skate on the canal a lot, and neither one of those things are, are, are possible right now. Even the outdoor rinks are shut down because it's it's simply too warm out. So that's um, just bizarre. Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. I miss winter. A proper winter. Because I, you know, I miss my winter sports. Which, you know, certainly does help with um, battling depression and anxiety when you have an athletic outlet. I think I'm going to have to uh, start back at the gym this week. I'd been meaning to do it, and uh, now is, I think there's no time like the present. If the outdoor sports aren't going to be happening, I might as well just start working out indoors. Got to get my uh, speedo body in... in uh, Beach shape, right for the for the coming summer. <laughs> There's an inside joke there for those who might get it and will get it anyway. Um, it's uh, it's been a weird winter. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but you know. The weather is something we usually think about quite a bit because it does occupy um, a large part of our lives, right? You know, the summertime when it's unbelievably hot, and it does get ridiculously hot here. Um, I, I go cycling until, you know, anything over 30 degrees is kind of like, no, because it's usually 40 with humidity. Now consider 37 degrees is body temperature, so 37 degrees Celsius is 98.6, 40 is 100 and change. So riding one cycle in 40 degree weather, some people like to do it. I don't because uh, I run hot and sweat like a demon. So I'm assuming demons sweat, of course. You know, hell, and fire. anyway. <laughs> So yeah, riding my bike in the summertime on hot days is not fun. The spring is okay, and I've, I've ridden throughout the spring and the fall. I used to do a fair bit of mountain biking when I was younger. Um, and I'll ride trails, uh, but I'm not going down crazy stuff anymore. I mean, I'm in my mid-50s, and I do know what pain is. More so than just, you know, the pain one feels when in one's heart and one's head. The pain of broken bones, I, I know what that feels like, and I don't care to, uh, 
to have any of those. Yeah. So cycling I will do by the Rideau Canal in the summertime and uh, the occasional off, uh, off-road trail. So exercise really does help with um, fighting back the demon of depression. Now, that being said, sometimes having the energy to get the exercise is the difficult thing. Sometimes because, as you know, depression zaps your energy. It, it you know, makes you just want to sleep all the time. Which is how I know I'm going through something right now because I'm always tired. But if you can get some exercise, take a walk, start with a walk, you know, go to the gym, get on a treadmill or a stationary bike, maybe lift some weights, I don't know what, uh, what suits your fancy, but exercise will help um, keep the demons at bay. It uh, will fight back the darkness. And as I, as I said, not being able to skate on the canal has kind of affected my psyche. But that's okay. I mean, I do know that tomorrow's another day, and, you know, I'm above ground still, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm still winning. Uh, I'm very chill this evening. I, uh, I do have two shows. I need to finish my jazz show and I have a pop music show that I'm producing, but I just didn't have the energy to work on it this evening. I planned on it. Um, it just kind of fell through. Had, uh, had to visit earlier with, uh, some family and, uh, yeah, that was nice. But I'm, uh, I'm just really tired right now. It happens. Tomorrow, thankfully, is another day. And that's the thing I need to keep reminding myself that I will get over this. This is only temporary. And deep cleansing breath certainly does help. How are you folks doing? Everybody feeling, uh, Feeling okay? You feeling? You feeling energetic? Or are you feeling low like I am? Feel free to share or not. Um, you know you're not. You're not required to. I just ask because it's always nice to have something to chat about. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Luna. Sometimes that does happen. Um, get hit by uh, the burnout truck. Yeah. It's happened to me a number of times. I know what it's like. And, uh, you know, you have the medication and you do the exercise and you do your meditative exercises like um, focusing on your breath. and All those things are great and wonderful and they help. But sometimes when your head's not in the right place, it's, it's difficult to concentrate on it. They didn't start off right. We had some severe technical difficulties this morning trying to um, to do our live stream. Um, my uh, collaborative partner was not able to get a, a signal that actually worked, so we I just did a, a fifteen or twenty minutes worth of uh, apologies and a couple of clips, and uh, away we went, or away I went, I guess you could say. <laughs> So it was a different day. It didn't start off on the right foot. Um, and that's when you, I think, you know, when sometimes the day doesn't start off the way you want it to. And it's like, okay, that happened. Let's move along. And thankfully, I'm able to move along. But you're always focusing on, okay, let's, let's get past that. We'll move on to the next thing and things will be better. Sometimes that just doesn't work out. And that was kind of today. So to that end, that's when you have to look at it and say, you know what? That happened. Sometimes that happens. There's nothing I can do to change it. It's over. It's done. 
let us put it behind me. Forget about today. Focus on tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. It gives us another chance. And you can't change the past. Try and make the best of the present. And focus on the positive tomorrow. Well, guinea piggers, if uh, you needed to take a nap, you take a nap. I used to push myself way past that at times when my body would say, dude, time to lie down, and I'd just keep pushing myself. Because that's how it was. I had to get things done. And I still have to get things done. But you start to refocus as you get a little bit older and you realize, okay, so I didn't get the laundry done today, but I have enough clothes to get me through the next couple of days. So, yeah, let's not worry about that one minor thing. I didn't, I didn't pick up groceries, but I have enough food for the next couple of days. So, again, let's not worry about that. Oh, damn, Mikhail. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Well, at least you've got the one positive thing, you know. If you, as long as you can get your medication, that's that's a good thing. I mean, sorry about the job and, uh, damn, living situations. That's always a tough one because that um, that does occupy a lot of anybody's headspace, right? I have no doubt, uh, Luna, that uh, school is, is uh, an uphill battle. And imposter syndrome can be a son of a gun. It can really kick you in the butt. I know. I've <laughs> I actually had thoughts about that today, which was funny, because we were in a meeting talking about some stuff, and uh, I started to explain this specific type of technology that I, that I work with and, you know, the advantages of it and how much t what I do during the day has changed in the last 10 or 15 years. And at the whole time I'm thinking, what if they find out I don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I, you know, that's the imposter syndrome. The thing is, I do know what I'm talking about. And nobody else did. <laughs> right? So that's the irony of it, that whole imposter thing. Well, what are they going to do when they find out I don't know what I'm doing? And then it was sort of a clue in to me when everybody said, what are you talking about? How does this work? And I started to explain it to them, and I realized, oh, yeah, I do know what I'm doing. It was a moment of clarity for me today, which was, it was very much needed. Um, it was needed, and it was required, and it, uh, I think it propelled me through the rest of the workday. In case, you know, when the workday ended and I didn't have anybody to talk to and I was just reading. And I do enjoy reading. That's normally my Saturday morning activity or, you know, when I go to bed I'll, I'll read for a bit before I go to sleep. But today, um, yeah. Today I was just, uh, yeah, feeling empty. The tank was running low at the end of my workday. And, uh, I do know that, uh, Tonight I'm going to sleep very well because I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and uh, I will have a better day tomorrow. I won't sleep like a baby because uh, babies are up every hour <laughs> crying to be fed or changed. And I know that's not going to be the case for me. I'm going to sleep like um, like a retired individual with not a care or worry in the world. Every day is Saturday when you're retired. At least that's what my folks always say. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh, man. That's a tough one, Mikhail. You'll make it through, brother. Just uh, hold on tight. Remember to breathe. And if you can, remind yourself that this bad thing is only temporary. 
I know it's easy for me to say that because when you're in the midst of suffering, it feels like it's going to last forever. And that's when the disorder will lie to you and tell you this is permanent, it's going to be forever, this is all it's ever going to be. That's the troublesome thing about depression and anxiety is they lie to you. And sadly, we often believe the lies. Hey, Quinn, how you doing? My nephew. Um, We don't want to believe the lies that the disorder tells us because they rob you of your humanity. They rob you of your personality. They rob you of your free time and your free brain space. It's the thing about depression and anxiety. They take so much from you. And we tend to believe the things they tell us even though we know they're not true. So, try and remember when you're in a a state of uh, depression or your anxiety is getting the best of you. Try and remember that it is only temporary, even though it'll tell you it's going to last forever and that it will never get better. It's a lie. Those disorders lie to you. Try not to believe their lies. It's easier said than done. I know, I believed them for a long time, I don't believe them anymore, and I still suffer, and I still fight, and I still battle, but I am capable of moving past, and I'm also able to remind myself that it is only temporary, it's not permanent, and that I will be better, and that tomorrow is a better day, tomorrow will always be a better day. And every day above ground is a good day. My buddy says that to me all the time when he looks at me and knows I'm suffering. They just say, hey, bud, remember, you're above ground. That's a good day. And he's right. You know, I used to say to a friend years ago when he were in the gym, I'd see him and he goes, oh, I had a terrible workout. And I just said, yeah, but it's better than no workout. And just looked at me for a minute and he thought, you know what, I never realized that before. I go, you got to find the positive where you can. Even when bad things are happening all around you, there's still something positive. So keep hope alive because hope is what propels us forward. Hope is what keeps us going. And believe in that hope because things do get better. And I hope you get better. So, I'm going to be uh, taking my leave in a moment. In a moment, I um, I want to thank everybody for joining in this evening. I hope that you're feeling better. Um, Remember to breathe. Breathing exercises do... Tremendous things for your heart, mind, body, and soul. Getting oxygen into your lungs by doing deep diaphragmatic breathing will help to also inject GABA into your brain. And it will instantly bring a calming sensation to you. It's a proven technique. It works. And I do it frequently to take a deep breath, hold it for three to five seconds, and inhale. And if you need to repeat that ten times, by all means do so. It will help make a tremendous difference. You'll feel calm, sense of peace and well-being within a few seconds. I guarantee. Works for me. It'll work for you. It's scientifically proven. And with that, my friends... I will bid you adieu. I am going to do some uh, work on my jazz show and my pop music show and uh, hope to have something produced for you in the next day or two. 
I'll see you next week. Same time. Same place. Take care. Bye. Thank you.